Yo, I have something to tell you. I am a big addict to film emulation. Since the beginning of my career, I tested several LUT plugins like Dehancer, Filmbox, Film Look Creator, and all of them are great, but they were either expensive or not so simple to use. But everything changed yesterday. I was on my computer minding my own business looking at photos of Patat when I received an email from Jason Bodak saying to check out the new film emulsion from Pixel Tools. And guys, I was impressed. Once I arrived on the website, I see a plugin with 16 film negatives, 3 prints and film tools for just 299.99 USD. And there's a discount until the 26th of October 2025 that brings the price down to 240 USD. Honestly, it's one of the cheapest offer I saw for film emulation plugins. So I turn right to Patat and I ask her, is it worth it? Let me show you the plugin. So here we are in our timeline and in my project settings, I am in DaVinci White Gamut 2 Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 to set correctly my film emulsion. I'm having two types of shot here. One is from a Sony FX3 and this sequence is in Ari Row that we will match in the second part of the video. So I group them per camera so it will be easier to match them later. Let's see the plugin on the FX3 shot. I am going to the post clip of the shot to apply the look because I like to elaborate my look first before working clip by clip. Film Emulsion gives us two power grades, one for color management in Resolve color manage level and one in a node based level. Let's take the node base level for this case. The input is set from DaVinci Ygamut to DaVinci Ygamut. We will change the input color space to Sony S Gamut 3 Cine and the input gamma to S Log 3. I will copy it and go to preclip and paste it. I will go back to postclip and delete the input node. And in my output node, I am going from DaVinci Ygamut to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. Let's start by the interesting part, the negative and the print. In the negative, we are able to regulate the intensity of the negative, the exposure, the temperature, the tint and the contrast. What is interesting is that it doesn't modify the image globally, but only the negative making the adjustment align with our look. We have 16 film negatives in this node. Just to note, this is the pro version. The basic version only has four film negatives. These film negatives are going from Kodak Vision 3 to Fuji Riola to Kodak Aero Color. Let's look at the print. In this node, we will be able to choose the way to interpret our film negative. You can regulate the print intensity, the contrast and the subtractive saturation of the print itself. You have the choice between three print stocks, the classic Kodak 2383, the Kodak 2393 and one of my favorite prints, the Fuji 3510. So beautiful. Let's make a look on our image with the print and the negative before tackling the rest. I'm going to stay with the arrow color. I will use it at 50%, remove a bit of exposure, make the image colder, have a bit more magenta, add some contrast and bring up my pivot. In the print, I will stay with the Fuji 3510 and reduce its intensity to 75%. Add a tad of contrast, bring down my pivot and add a bit of subtractive saturation. You can see on our image that we have some halation applied. Let's go to the halation node. The halation is using the film look creator, but Pixel Tools is working on creating a dedicated tool for it. And this will be only available for those who have taken the pro package. As I find the halation a bit much for my image and I don't want to mess up with the settings, I go to my note key and reduce the output gain to 78%. After we have roll off and this will help us to control our highlights. This is controlled thanks to the curves 
and you can modify the intensity of it if you'd like. After we have sharpen and this tool is here to sharpen our footage to be able to distinguish better the texture of our film. We have an interesting note following this which is grain. To open it, double click on it and you have a film blur node, a node for grain in HD and a node for grain in 4K. Note that Pixel Tool is working on a grain tool and people that have taken the pro version of Film Emulsion will receive it to replace the compound node. Let's go back and finish with Get With that emulates the passage of strips inside the camera which makes the image subtly shaky. This tool is so easy to use. What I really like is that everything is separated by a node which makes it very easy to troubleshoot. Also everything is indicated clearly and there is no overcomplicating tools to make our film look. The fact that we can customize separately the intensity of the negative and the print is also a huge plus for me. Now that I showed you all the features, let's see how to build a look and grade with it. So let's go back to our power grade and Pixel Tools gives us one power grade that can be used for resolve color management. You can see that input and output are disabled. That's how you use the tool if you are in a DaVinci YRGB color manage. Let's enable it back, change our input color space to Ari white gamut, paste it in the pre-clip level and delete the input node in the post-clip level. In the output, I will change the CST to a DRT I love, which is the JP2499. I have made a video about it, go check it out. And you see that the tool works great with another DRT than CST. For this grade, I want to make something poppy out of the image. In negative, I will change to the Kodak Vision 3 50D. I will use 50% of it and make it colder to have some separation. In the print, I will use it at 50% too because I like when my film look is subtle. And I will change the print for the Fuji 3510. I will remove some contrast, change the pivot to make it brighter and add some saturation. Now that this is set, I come back to my negative to tailor it more with less temperature, more exposure and more contrast. And guys, I love the look. Now for the halation, you can see that the halation is a bit intense. I will reduce it to make it more natural to 50%. The roll off and sharpen are fine for me. Let's go to the grain. I will reduce the film blur because I like sharper images and I will switch to 4K grain. You can see the difference. I removed the get with to have a more modern look. Now that the look is done and because we created a group at the beginning of the video with all the RE footage, the look will get applied to all my RE sequence. I will then go to the clip level to grade shot by shot. For this one, very simple, I bring up the global wheel in my HDR panel and add some color boost for the separation. This is my balance node. Let's work on the density of the colors because for me, the skin is a bit too dense. In the color slice, I'm going to go in skin and I will remove some subtractive saturation. And also, I will remove a bit of yellow to find back this citrusy yellow. I'm going to finish with an overall vignette. It gives a bit of punch to my footage. As there is a lot of reflection, I will create a node at the beginning of my node tree and control the light. I go to my HDR wheels and I tone down the lights to make it less harsh. The final touch, I create a node at the end, right click, composite and overlay. I will reduce the gain to 8% to add a slight contrast on my grade. Let's do all the other shots. As the look is already set, it is only a matter of matching the light and the temperature of the shots. It goes super quickly and it took me two minutes of time. Here is the final result. Definitely the film emulation from Pixel Tools is a great bang for buck. It is so easy to use, there's no fluff and we are going to the essentials. It is a cheap plugin compared to all the offers out there but the quality is here and it delivers. 
I put you the link in the description if you want to check it out. And if you miss the promo, you can get 10% off on it by using the code FRENCHY10 upon checkout. I hope the video helped and it expanded your knowledge of film emulation plugins out there. Have a great day, guys. Have a great night. I see you next time. See you.